Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've got an Agilent U1253B True RMS OLED Multimeter It's in immaculate condition It really just looks like it's got very very few hours on it It comes with the charger because this is an NIMH battery powered uh, multimeter so you can charge it via the sockets on the front here but it is faulty and I believe it's suffering from the classic case of OLED failure. These multimeters, these OLED multimeters have got a history of failure on the display where it just gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer to the point where it's actually completely unreadable. So it does have a charge battery inside it so let me power it up and let's see if we can see anything on that display at all when I power it up. Okay, and there's the display front and centre, so just off camera there, I'll just turn it on, you should hear it beep as it starts up. Yep, nice little tune on start up, and I can see it's very, very dim, but I can actually see some digits on the display there. Let me just turn it off again. Yep, and it cleared. It's really, really hard to see back on again and yep there's some digits again so hopefully I can do something with that in DaVinci Resolve so that you can actually see it so the question is what can be done about these multimeters that fail well the display itself it's built by Agilent I believe and it's rather bespoke to the multimeter so it's not like you can just go and buy an off-the-shelf display and fit it now if you know your OLED technology, you'll realise that there is no backlighting as such on these displays. Every pixel that lights up is its own backlight effectively. And the question is, why did it fail? There's a couple of reasons for that. There's both internal and external mechanisms at play here which cause the failure of the display. Externally, you can get pinhole formations on the actual LEDs themselves uh, which provides a path for oxygen and moisture to get inside and that basically starts to kill the actual LED. On the internal side you can get instability in actual organic layers within the LEDs and heat also plays a part which causes degradation of the LEDs as well. So as I said there is no backlight. The LEDs themselves produce the light. So how do we fix it if the LED itself is not an off-the-shelf part? Well, there's a few manufacturers out there, and notably on eBay, AliExpress, those sorts of places, who have produced a replacement kit which consists of an actual OLED display itself and the controller on the back which has then just got a pin header down onto the main board within the unit so it's just a case of pulling out the old one and plugging in the new one and hopefully that will bring the multimeter back to life So there we go, we're inside the unit and it's pristine inside and you can see the actual display board itself held on with these four screws here and you can see down in there hopefully the actual header itself which takes it down onto this main board here. So it looks like it's just a case of unscrewing those four screws and the new display will just screw straight back down. Now I do believe there's different kinds of kits available. I think you can actually get uh, the actual display itself and you're expected to uh, you know, bond it to the original board. Um, but I just went for the one where it's a complete kit and you just uh, take out the four screws, plug it in the new board and off you go. So that's the four screws out, so let's see if it just unplugs. Yeah, and there we go. And you can see the actual control 
IC there and the bonded connection for the actual display itself and if we compare that with this new one it's got a completely different set of hardware there for controlling the actual display itself but obviously the protocol uh, for, for the main board onto the actual display is going to be identical this new board is going to pick all that up so just a case of taking the new board and plugging it in I'm sitting and I can see that the holes do appear to line up okay I'm ready to refit it I will take off this screen protector here there we go Okay, I think we're actually ready for a power up before I actually put the back case on. Uh, I will need to hold the board in uh, just to make sure that the uh, selector switch contacts with the PCB, but I should manage to do that. Now, but one thing I have noticed, really weird one. Let me zoom in and let you take a look. So here's the back of the board there. There's the Agilent logo. And that should say Agilent, but as you can see, it's missing a few of the letters. It's just got the I, L, and the N and the T at the end there. Not really sure what's going on there. Uh, it's not like it's been scraped or anything like that. It just looks like uh, that's how it's been screen printed. So whether there's any sort of internal code that they're using that, uh, in terms of production that they would miss off letters or add letters uh, to signify something during production I don't know but that would be rather unusual and it's just a little bit weird there okay so let's bring in the battery plug that in and if I can turn it round and I'll hold the back of the board into the case and let's switch it on and see what happens ah <laughs> yes A nice working display there and the colour of it is the same orange as the actual multimeter itself. Now in terms of the quality of the actual display I don't really know. I've never actually seen one of these U1253Bs up close and working so uh, in terms of uh, the quality I don't really know. Uh, I don't have a comparison for that. But in terms of uh, just being a multimeter it looks like it's doing the job. Okay, and let's get the rear panel back on. Well, that's it all back together. So let's just power it up again, make sure it's working okay. Yep. And it's beeping away there, playing some music at startup. Brilliant. Ah, uh, but wait a minute, we're not quite finished there. I have actually gone ahead and bought a replacement display for the original Agilent board for the meter. So I'm actually going to go ahead and fit that one here right now and I'll keep it as a spare. But one thing I did notice whilst I was just testing and using this multimeter, the battery that came with it isn't too great. It's dropping in voltage pretty quickly. And the symptom of that is rather curious. So let me just zoom in a little and I'll show you. So there's a couple of oddities that do happen with a knackered battery and the voltage is a bit low. So if I just try turning it on, look at that. <laughs> I hope you saw that. That was a mirror image display. Let me turn it off again. And turn it on. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and then it just cuts out. And sometimes when you switch it on, it's blank all the time, the display. Although you can hear the meter powering up. So, yeah. I have actually taken the battery out of it and it's way down at like 6.2 volts again after just 5 minutes use. It's not holding a charge at all. So I do actually have a new battery. But first things first, let's uh, 
try and get this old OLED display off of this circuit board and fit the new one. And here is the new replacement OLED glass panel, which will just go straight onto the PCB here. If I turn it over, you can see the actual soldered connection there where it's bonded to the PCB and it just basically flops around like that. Now one thing I will need to do before I take this one off the PCB is mark down exactly where it's positioned on the circuit board and not by the glass size just in case it's any different but by the actual uh, display area there so I'm going to mark it on the PCB with an indelible pen exactly where the display area lies so that I can line the new one up in place after I've soldered it in place. So let me prepare that and then we'll start desoldering the OLED from the PCB. It's actually falling apart as I pull it. Such is the brittle nature of this flat flex. And there we go. That's it. So I just need to clean up those pads. And the next thing to do is remove the glass. Now it will be bonded down, glued down, double-sided tape down. One way or another it's attached to the PCB. So I'm actually going to apply a little heat uh, just to remove it. And there it is. And yep, it was double-sided tape. And a little bit of masking tape either side just to hold it in the right position. And then I can start soldering it down. Now the actual flat flex itself has got some holes through it. And I believe that will be to let the solder and the flux just come through the hole to make sure you've got a good solder joint and a good flow of that solder onto both sides of that flat flex. First of all, just put some additional flux on there. We don't want to heat up the flat flex too much. Otherwise I could melt it. So I'll just clean off the flux now and we'll take it from there. Well, looks like it's soldered down okay. The next thing to do actually is to line it up on the other side against the marks that I've made and give it a bit of a clean up as well probably. And I'm going to use this very thin double sided tape much like what was on it before in order to hold it down. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And there it is, all ready to go back into the meter. And we've got the meter apart, so let's offer up the new display again. And put in the screws. Okay, and here we go, ready for a power up again. Now let's connect the battery. I'll need to hold the PCB in again. And let's see what happens. Well, I've got a reverse display. And curiously, it's a different colour. Well, it would appear I've been shipped the OLED for a U1253A meter instead of the B. Hence the white display. And it's quite possible that there's a difference in those OLEDs and one is reversed in comparison to the other. And I did look up the uh, data sheet for this particular OLED and unfortunately it's not just a simple case of changing one of the pins on the ribbon there. It is actually a software thing. There's a one bit difference on one of the setup uh, uh, bytes that you send to the display uh, which determine whether it's reversed or not. So there's not much I can do about it. 
So I'll just have to go ahead and uh, try and see if I can purchase the correct OLED this time. But anyway, I'll put the meter back together and maybe there'll be a part two. Thanks for watching.